against Texas Tech. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. What a pleasure it is to be a part of the great college football tradition here at ABC. Texas Tech. They were the first college team ever to get on an airplane and make a road trip. That was back in the 30s. They went to Detroit for that game. This is the first time that they have ever played a team for the Big Ten. And oh, did they select one wrapped in all the tradition. The great Woody Hayes. The national championship trophies here. The five Heisman trophies that have been won by the Buckeyes. Dick Vermeil, you don't know what I had to go through to get back next to you, partner, but I want to tell you it's a pleasure to join up you. With nice you here with you. College football. And we talked about the Rose Bowl. You took a great Bruin team from UCLA there. What about John Cooper now in his third year trying to get the Bucks back to the top? Well, Brent, I've been broadcasting Ohio State football for the last couple of years. I've seen him four or five times. I've watched him practice. I've studied other game films. And this, by far, is their best football team. Meanwhile, across the way, the Road Warrior from West Texas, Spike One Line Dykes. What about this Red Raider team? Well, when you talk to the coaching staff, defensively, they really believe they're going to be a better football team. Eight returning starters. Offensively, some concern. Jamie Gill, the quarterback, fine group of wide receivers. Gone is John Gray, the great running back. So look for him to open up that offense and get after him, throwing the ball. All right, so sit back and enjoy. We hope it's a good one. The Buckeyes of Ohio State against the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Coming up. Columbus, Ohio, jam to those steel girders again. But a brand new rug down there. Now we welcome the newest member of the ABC Sports team from Toronto, Canada. Mark Jones and Mark I know you've been tracing that story and welcome aboard it's a pleasure to have you. Brent it's a pleasure to be here and uh, you're exactly right they got a brand new rug down here actually it's not a rug it is natural grass what they did was rip up the old carpet throw it away and the players are all thrilled to be playing on the real stuff that brings up a couple of interesting points you see what happened is neither of these teams are used to playing on grass so come the third or fourth quarter it could slow them down by a half a step or even a step second of all robert smith mr football in the state of ohio and one of the most sought after prospects in the country last year said he came to columbus mainly because they'll be playing on real grass real grass gets your real foot back a real great investment by John Cooper and his staff, wouldn't you say? I'd say so, Mark. Thank you. We may see Mr. Smith here early as Lynn Elliott will kick it off. And one of the deep men is Robert Smith, number 32, who electrified this crowd in a scrimmage when he ran it back for a touchdown. He's near the bottom of your screen. The debut a hole. He's got an opening. Out of bounds at the 44-yard line, and Lynn Elliott, the kicker, had to get him out. Greg Fry brings the Buckeyes out. The skilled men who are behind him, and it's an awesome group here for Ohio State. Scotty Graham's the workhorse. The redshirt freshman Raymond Harris will start. The offensive line, the big question mark. Dan Beatty brings his great leadership. The only veteran. They send Harris in motion on first down. And they pound Scotty Graham right ahead into the heart of that defense. Now, when you see an asterisk, Alongside a name, it's a returning starter here. The Texas Tech defensive line yielding that time. The veterans in this group are the three linebackers and the four defensive backs. So already, Dick Vermeil second and three for Fry and the Buckeyes. But I tell you this, knowing the philosophy of, o philosophy of Ohio State, Brent, they really don't look in, and think in terms of a waist down. In these situations, they like to keep running Coach. Coach Cooper. Texas Tech is an unknown quantity. This is what their coaches were talking about. We must keep them off guard by continually changing our looks, meaning varying the formations. Here they are with two tight ends, a different look. Paletto does not like to waste it down. Second and three. Some coaches would go long here and come back and pound. Paletto not necessarily so, and he does not. Ooh, Ram for the first down. 
John Peterson, their offensive strong side guard, got an awfully good block that time. Brian Dubisky, number 23, made that stop for the Red Raider defense. The defensive coordinator from Texas Tech's comments in regard to defending this thing, they're very concerned about the offense and that huge offensive line controlling the ball. After the great kickoff return by the freshman, the Buckeyes have marched to the Red Raider 41. Already great field position. Here is Harris. Stacked up on the right side by Matt Wingo leading the way. Second down and six for Fry and the Buckeyes. Wearing that visor as he eyes the defense. He's keeping it on the ground. He slipped getting the ball over to Graham. And uh, Dick, there appeared to be a little miscommunication. There. Somebody made a mistake, either the quarterback or the running back. In this case, I really believe, as it being an ex-quarterback coach, I'll blame the running back. You'll see tailback deep in the backfield there, two, one back attack. <laughs> Greg started a reverse pivot all the way around to handle the ball going the other way, then recognized the fullback coming to his left. Maybe it was on the quarterback. Number 13, Stefan Weatherspoon, another of the talented Red Raider linebackers doing a good job there. So here it is now, third and four. His first pass. It'll be right at the marker for the first down as Ronald Ferguson came up defensively and made the play on Graham. Now you'll see Graham coming out of the backfield after play action. Two linemen have to actually bump into each other. Graham coming out there all alone with that counteraction. Ferguson come up making the tackle. It's third and inches, fourth and inches. Hey, they're going for it early, aren't they? Yes, they are. They have marched down to the Texas Tech 32-yard line. They need that one yard to keep it going. The movement there was that defense pulled off. Well, the defensive people all started appointing. Jim Kemmerling is the referee. It's a Big Ten crew here this afternoon in Columbus. Giving the Buckeyes a first down. There's Spike. He's a little upset. Wait a minute. You can't call that. My guy saw it was the other way. <laughs> Many times in these situations, Brent, is the time you don't want to read lips. On the defense, first down. So the ball is spotted at the Red Raider 26. If you just joined us, Freshman Robert Smith, the sensation, took the opening kickoff, cut to his right, and returned it 34 yards. That set up this drive. Greg Fry has the Buckeyes on the move. First possession of the day. Double tight ends, one back attack, two wide receivers. <laughs> Running the draw play with Harris. He battles his way inside the 20-yard line and in the arms of Dubisky, number 23, who has been forced to be active defensively. This is that famous Washington Redskins counter gap play. Focus your attention on the big offensive lineman at the center of your screen as they pull. Kick out block, turn up block. Harris cuts back, gets a nice cutback position in there, and gets that eight-yard gain. Dick, when we call the number 23 Dubisky on defense, it means that the front seven is having not making trouble the stop. right now. That counteraction can really, you know, a quick moving defense like that can give them problems. This is second and one. Graham has the first down, does he? There is a penalty marker down, however, near the middle of the line play. Brad Phelps, 65, doing the job defensively. Boy, that was an awfully good block at the point of attack. 
by big Mick Schoep, number 78. They're calling holding or what? A face mask against the Red Raiders. So two big penalties against them here in the early going on this drive. Not smart football. They're going to be tough enough to beat physically as it is, let alone commit the, we have a five the air. On the defense, first down. Ball is spotted at the Texas Tech 11-yard line. Another first down for Fry and the Buckeye offense. Wide receivers shovel the plays in from Coach Cooper's sideline. Spoon adjusting the defense. Again, Scotty Graham stepped neatly into that hole and battled his way to the six. End zone shot, offensive left guard, number 75, left center of your screen, blocking and turning out, doing an awfully good job at the point of attack, giving him that room to bustle up inside. Dick Graham has been the workhorse behind Peterson in that offensive line. Five carries for 23 yards already. When you it get in second and five. When you get in that one back attack, it's tough to give the ball to anybody else. <laughs> Even when they're in the eye formation, they give it to him. And he gets to the three-yard line. and be short of a first down. Matt Wingo, number 45, making the stop for the Red Raiders. Well, Scotty Graham is 5'10", 220 pounds. He's out of Long Beach, New York, which is located on Long Island. Great Ohio State tradition at that school. Pete Johnson, former great here, was also a fullback at that high school. Short of the end zone. The linebacker coming up to help force with that defensive line. And number 65, Brad Phelps, made the big play. I don't think they made it. Mike Lissio and those guys here, they were battling right there at the point of attack. Fourth down. What do you do this early in the season? Normally, I would kick the field goal. So now, they, they feel they're bigger and stronger than Texas Tech's defensive line. Heck, they're going to go after it. Normal procedure, I think, is to kick the ball. This could be a huge, in fact, it will be a huge lift either way. Double tight end, fourth and one. They can get a first down without the touchdown, remember. He still has it, and he doesn't make it. He does not make it. I agree with Witherspoon. They stop him. I'll tell you, was that big John Woods, number 70, that came up up? Underneath that, Ronald Ferguson, number five, along with 74, Stephen Gaines, do the job. Spike has got to like that one. Advantage Texas Tech. The Buckeyes march inside the five and can't score. We're coming right back. Field position, hostile crowd, Red Raiders first possession, and they option the fullback straight ahead off of that eye. Louis Sheffield. And Jamie Gill, the quarterback for the Red Raiders. What a great defensive play that was just moments ago, which sets up this offensive series of the defensive unit watching the offense over there from the Red Raiders sideline. There is Jamie. Third and 26, as you folks in West Texas know, that's his favorite. <laughs> right now it's second and eight. Toss to Anthony Lynn, number 22, will be calling his number all game long. What a story he is. Lynn is the man who must replace the great James Gray. And there you see the returning starter, Manny Weather, the wide receiver. Another young offensive line, Dick, just like the Buckeyes. And experienced, and they're concerned about it. But they can pass protect. They have good wide receivers. Look for the screens, the draws, and all this. A little bit of a finesse in, within their offensive game plan. Interesting play here. They have third and one. 
They have an offset eye. That's a formation you're looking at with Sheffield and Lynn. Defense said he was moved. Now the flag comes down. Defense claiming that he was pulled off the right side. But no, he was not. Jumped across, made contact. I think the movement is up. Oh, he made contact. He thought there was movement, and Kaczerski tapped him on the helmet. That was a mistake. 95 to Kaczerski should not have tapped him on the helmet. So perhaps a little tension here by both yeah. these teams in the uh, in the early going of this ball game. Red Raiders handling the ball for the first time. Well, Coach Vermeil, you said it. You would kick the field goal down there. Well, I'm a little more conservative than Cooper's. Plus, it's not a Big Ten open. It's not a league game. But I just think don't take a chance on uh, firing up the other unit. Get your three points and get out of there. Well, as Marcus come back flying again here at the 17-yard line. You know, many times those decisions are made prior to the situation occurring in the ball game. Coaches make those in meeting rooms and... And they say, listen, if we get that situation early in the ball game, we're going to go for the fourth down and try to get it. Ball start on the offense, first down. Let's quickly take a look at the Buckeye defense. They've got some names that you want to remember. Spellman, number 99, a player he's going to be. Kaczerski, who's just offside a moment ago. Benny Clark, the veteran on that second down. Now, it is a first and 15 after the five-yard penalty. And they get back to about the original line of scrimmage. And right now, let's get an update. Let update. Let's say to New York and Roger Twyvo. Roger. Thank you very much, Brent. Texas and Penn State. Texas leads it. Last play of the game. Tony Saka, the desperation pass to Al Golden. But Stanley Richard knocks it down. And for Joe Paterno, his second straight opening game loss, the first time. And this is 25th year at Penn State. Let's go back to Brent. Well, Roger, let's see. Does the Big Ten count that as a non-conference loss? I know you folks down in Dallas, down in Texas, are happy to see that. With the Longhorn winning here today. Now, that, draw. that draw play. Woo. Lynn with a big hole explodes out to the 32-yard line. That's the play you talked about, Dick. They like that. And you notice they had three wide receivers on the field. That spread out the defense. He'll start the action play to the right. Now, we watch now blocking important over here to the left side of your screen. He's going backside all the way, being led by Jason Duvall, number 66. Taking another look at it from a low angle, setting and showing pass. They get Spellman upfield right there. They get up underneath him. Inexperienced at that defensive end spot. Tom Lease, 81, wrapping him up after the 15-yard gain and a first down for the Red Raiders, and they have brought the ball out for their own 32. Gill to put it up. As time, receivers were covered, and he cannot get away from Steve Tovar, number 58. The secondary took the pattern away. No place to go with the football. He scrambles out. You'll note now he doesn't come straight back. He starts off at a, what we call a short drop to the left. Now he comes back over the right. Here comes Tobar. Speed that Ohio State did not have last year. Many times they had a tough time defensing this quarterback scramble last year, Brent. Just it just drove him crazy. Well, ten more yards and he'll have third and twenty-six after that six-yard loss. Those were the two big plays that Texas Tech fans will remember forever. Beat the horns in Texas AM. White straight back. He's got a man. It's deflected oh. incomplete. He didn't get the ball high enough on the release. The 88, Brian Hooper was the intended receiver. He was all alone on this pattern. Woo. Texas Tech's the offensive goals. We must not allow them to dominate us up front. Keep them off balance with what they've already done. Run those screens, run the draws, and spread them out. Coach Winder. Interesting call here. Third and 16, back deep in your own territory. Early going. And Spike says, let's go after it. Uh -oh. And he can't get the ball off. Loose ball on the hit. John Kaczerski comes in from the blind side and knocks the ball free. Buckeye ball on the fumble recovery. Here he is 
the middle of your screen, number 95, fine pass rusher. Year before last, he led the Big Ten in sacks with nine up. Keeps coming, good quickness, not good blocking technique. They didn't, they didn't rule it a fumble down there. They said that it was down. There is a penalty flag on the punt. Jeff Graham steps out of bounds at the Red Raiders 46. Delagerheim is the man under the gun as the punter, Mike Delagerheim. 5'10", 200 pound redshirt freshman. And Coach Dyke's very concerned about that situation. Well, he was concerned about the punting situation yesterday as we talked to him. You know, totally inexperienced. He walked on. Transferred from West Point. Wow. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker on the defense. First down. Oh, what a big penalty. That's like a fumble or an interception. It's a turnover. Oh, so what we thought was a fumble on that sack, which was not, allowed them to put out. And now, instead of having the ball inside the 50-yard line, the Buckeyes have given up a first down to the Red Raiders. So things are not going John Cooper's way in the early going. Remember, they moved down inside the five-yard line, could not score on fourth and goal, had the Red Raiders apparently bottled up. Now with another penalty, they've allowed them to come out to the 35-yard line. So Spike Dykes and the Red Raiders love what's happening here. And they have to like Lynn. Five-yard run, making it second and five. Here's the roughing the punter penalty right there in the middle of your screen in front of that goal post. He re yeah, really went right across that leg. Can't give you the number of the person involved, but you can see the contact made. Boy, you, you know, you coach like mad when you go after the punter to go to the kicking point further in front of him, and evidently he got too deep. Obvious. The toss to Lynn behind Sheffield. Short of the first down. That was Alonzo Stoner bringing him down from behind. Defensive coordinator from Ohio State, Bill Young, he says, even though our job is to stop their offense, we really feel in a competitive, we have to compete with their defense. Beat their defense by one point, and we've done a good job. Coach Cooper is more concerned about their defense going through this season than he is their offense. First down, and it was Lynn before he was hit by Tovar. So things here in the early going have really turned in Texas Tech's favor. As upset as Spike Dave Dykes was early, now things are starting to go his way. We got some field position. Sheffield and uh Gill was either trying to get out of the way. We'll get the best of it. He was trying to lead the blockers. And again, number 58 was there, along with Kaczerski. Kaczerski will be in an awful lot of football plays. He loves to play football. Left-hand corner of your screen. Hard to knock off his feet. Strongest player in the team. Bench pressing 475 pounds. That's 20 pounds better than your bench. <laughs> <laughs> and then I took it off the machine. <laughs> It was Tovar, by the way, who got through first. Oh, he, he set that up. He's at quickness. Now it's second down and 11. They fake the draw, drop off the screen to Sheffield, and he's across midfield. And again, Tovar was there along with Spellman. You know, the offensive coordinator for Texas Tech, Dick Winder, is really doing a good job in, in running this offense because he's doing to Ohio State's defense what they didn't do a good job of handling last year, the screens and the draws. Though they'll find that the Ohio State defense is much quicker and will respond better today. But a good approach to moving the ball on. Shane Sears checks into that backfield. He is the fullback.
Cooper in motion behind Gill, who will put it up. Incomplete. Get it. There's a flag down. There is a flag on the play. Coming in on a slant pattern to the right side of your screen, coming in low, so just breaking inside a double zone coverage. A defender rolled up and was thrown behind him. That is tough to catch when you're moving upfield like that. It was declined, bringing up a putting situation by Coach Dykes and the Liberators. The Buckeyes wanting the ball back. The last time they ran in to Mike DeLaga High. Trying to rattle him, obviously, early in the game. They know that the Red Raiders have had trouble with their punting game here in the spring and early part of the fall. That is a return type ball. Here he comes. But great coverage, and that's something that the Red Raiders really feature. They give you nothing on those punt returns. A 38-yard punt and only a three-yard return. We're coming back. The special teams play of the Red Raiders. Fabulous. Oh, last year, the, last year they only allowed 2.5 yards of punt return. That was an example there, just allowing three. And the count by fly. Graham. You know, I got a question, Dick. When they were down inside the five, did the Buckeye coaching staff feel that they would be looking for Scotty Graham and they had try keep it and roll, trying to, to surprise them? I don't think they have the type of play with the quarterback keeping in a naked situation, coming out by himself, unless it's a pass. I don't think they, they don't look at him as a running quarterback. At the line, checking that defense. the pass. A first down for the Buckeyes out to the 36 and that was Jeff Ellis. What a story number 89 is. 6'4", 260, back from knee surgery. Focus your attention now on the linebacker standing up there, number 45, Matt Wingle. Watch what the misdirection does to him. Here it goes. See, he slides. He's frozen in position. He can't drop into the coverage. Now here comes a 263-pound tight end. A little bit overweight. They have him on the fat man, fat man table right now. First and ten for the Buckeyes. He's going to put it up again. And he drops it off. Complete to Harris, sliding out of the backfield. That's Raymond Harris out of Lorraine, Ohio. And Charles Lowe, number 38, the Butkus Award nominee, got the job done defensively. Now, they're going to try to isolate these swift running backs, these tailbacks, on row in the rest of those linebackers. Well, because when they go too deep, cover, giving two safeties 50% of the field to cover deep and roll the corners up, they assign the linebackers the job of running down the hole with those running backs. Uh, Rob Smith and those guys going down the hole. Oh, 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 oh. Second down and eight. Seconds ticking away here in the first quarter. Oh, oh, the draw play with Scotty Graham. He's wrapped up. Let's catch another update. Here's Roger Quibble in New York. Roger. Thank you very much, Brent. Oklahoma and UCLA, third and seven for Ohio State. ends before they can get the snap up. The first Win quarter has come to an end here. Columbus, Ohio. John Cooper and the Buckeyes fail to cash in on their first opportunity. We're scoreless. The state moved inside the Texas Tech five-yard line and could not score. They came away empty-handed. They went for a touchdown on fourth down. This is third and seven. Under pressure, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Harris. And again, Rowe is right there shadowing him. He's an awfully fine linebacker. I know their linebacker coach, John Paul Young, has coached a lot of good linebackers in the NFL as well as in college. And he thinks this guy is a real good football player. Eight for Texas Tech, number six. 
Tracy Saul. So Tracy Saul is back deep as Jeff Bowman sets up the punt, and Tracy Saul averaged 10 yards a punt return. You know what that amounts to? That amounts to one first down per series for the offense. What a great contribution. Fumble. Five and fumble ball, loose Buckeyes on it. You know, with Trigon and Vic, and this happens. Hey, it happens to everybody. It doesn't appear to be a problem. He's concentrating nicely. A little too much meat of the ball on the shoulder pad. That's what happened. Got to cradle a little bit more with the arms and draw it to your body. Taking another look. Here it comes down. Pretty good. Should have been fielded. Should not have been a problem, and I'm sure that probably will be the last one for the year. That's a 32-yard offensive play for the Buckeyes. And Roger Harper coming up with the fumble recovery just inside the Red Raider 30. So the second scoring opportunity presenting itself by the Buckeyes here today. Fly for Graham, incomplete inside the five, and Sammy Walker was there with him. And boy, Sammy Walker can run. Sammy Walker in good position. They're running a post pattern inside him. He's right on him. You'll see him right there, hands up in there. Ball thrown a little high, but he wouldn't have been able to catch it anyway. Good pass defense by Sam Walker. And you're not going to outrun Sammy Walker. Oh, no way. way. Best 100 meters in last year's NCAA track championship. Man can flat out move it. And only has vision in one eye. <laughs> Second down and 10. Let's follow up on that Walker story. That's a good one. Let's go down to the sideline now to Mark Jones. Mark? Well, you just saw Sammy Walker make a great play, guys. And Sammy Walker is legally blind in his right eye due as a result of a construction accident when he was in high school. But I tell you, they keep him on the right side of the field. And the guy is, well, has a future in the NFL, some people think anyway. Back to you. All right, he certainly looked at that time, didn't he, Mark? Yeah, 2,200 is how they've measured it in that eye. Now, this is third and eight for Ohio State. They tighten up the coverage. I wouldn't doubt that they're coming after him. He's audible. They aren't going to do a lot of audible. Oh, he's got to call timeout. Ran out of clock time. It's not going to make the Ohio State coaches very happy. No, I'd like to see a timeout used in that situation. Cooper will try to fire his troops up now. They replaced in divots. Where's his four iron? <laughs> <laughs> Dick, uh, talk to me about the audible problem of Greg Fry when he came to the line. Well, with the young offensive line, Coach Coletto, the offensive coordinator, they were going to do very little audible. And I think he just ran out of time going through the mechanics. Now he has a play. Good protection and completes it underneath. Good defense that time. And that was Bobby Olive, the senior from Atlanta, and Tony Brown was draped all over it. Taking a look at from the end zone, it's a delay pattern from the right side of your screen. The running back, Dante Morna, Dante Lee, number five. See, he leaves. He cleans out the area. Now you'll see the delay pattern coming in underneath. There it is. It. Bobby Olive tucking it away. He's a big, long, six foot one, 185 pound kid. Giving Ohio State a first down inside the Red Raider 20-yard line. Remember, they were down here very early and failed to come away with anything. It was scoreless for the second quarter, 13 and a half minutes to go. Change that defense at the last Fumble. second. Lee fumbles, Red Raider ball. And jumping on it was Marcus Washington, number 42. that the Buckeyes have failed. they getting down there. It's, it's an eye toss play, tossing the ball deep to the tailback. I think the toss hits Dante Lee right up into the shoulder pads. And as he starts down, you'll see him right there. It hits him right in the pads. It almost looks like he wasn't looking for the football. You know what we're going to see soon, Mr. Ballou? We're going to see a Mr. Smith. Robert <laughs> Smith, the Ballyhooed freshman, is going to be given some time here before long. Now, both teams have turned the ball over. 13-25. First half, there's Lynn off the draw. And the Buckeyes jam him up. 
a point here. Earlier in the ball game, they ran the same draw on Alonzo Spellman, and I actually mentioned he got way up the field too far on the draw. This time, he read it, closed down, and made the play. We've got more action coming your way next week on ABC. Penn State, which lost today to Texas in a big win against USC. Have you seen Todd Marinovich? He's a candidate for the Heisman. Colorado will be battling the fighting Illini of Illinois in Champaign. Some of you will watch the top-ranked Miami Hurricanes go west to take on California. 3.30 Eastern time next Saturday. And off a great fake that time by Gill, incomplete. He wanted Rodney Blackshear. I mean, I wasn't sure who had the ball. And while we've got a second, let's check in with Roger Twibel again. Roger? Thank you very much, Brent. Turnover is becoming a factor in the UCLA-Oklahoma game. 88, Stan LaChapelle back to receive the punt. He's hit by 24, Drew Chrisman. And Tony Levy recovers the fumble. Rashid would take it in. Oklahoma leads it 14 to 6 in the second quarter. And Gabriella Sabatini's won her first Grand Slam. She beats Steffi Graf. Now back to Brent. Well, the Sooner. Good move. And they are all over Gill, led by Kaczerski, number 95. Kaczerski has that great quickness. He took Baker's number 68 upfield and then took the inside course and beat him up underneath. You'll see him right in the middle of your screen. Now, 68 bigger, see him, he sits, and he's sitting too deep, setting too deep, and he gave him that room inside. The only choice he had was to tackle. The logger high, and he gets a good block. They're going to try to cause him some trouble. They're going to come after one of his punts before the afternoon is over. Ball is down at the 41-yard line, 38-yard punt. We've got no score in Columbus, Ohio State, and Texas Tech. Fake to Lee, who stayed Ooh. in the game. Great pressure. Interception. Interception. He threw it, and Brian Dubisky picked it off. Red Raider ball at the 45. That was a real good job of defense. He then played by Mike Lissio. You're taking a look again from the end zone. You'll see there's counteraction away. Quarterback is going to make it look like it's going the other way. Now he comes back out here. You'll see Lissio right there. He keeps coming. He keeps coming. He gets his hand in his, his face. And that is when quarterback pressure is more valuable than a quarterback sack. If he had sacked him, he wouldn't have been able to throw the ball. Another look. Here he is. Len Hartman, number 52, has got to do a better job of blocking, but Lissio does an excellent job. Familiar name. You nice better Lissio, the son of former Cowboy tackle Tony Lissio. He had to make his papa happy for that play. Red Raiders now with a chance. Ball in Ohio State territory. First and 10, and Gill to put it up on first down. Complete. Throws a strike for nine yards to Jeff Holm, the tight end. You know, you mentioned it earlier, talking about the ball handling techniques of Gill. He fakes very well. I mean, he really hides the football. How about that score? Winning and stunning. Sabatini scored a touchdown in the second quarter, it looks like there. <laughs> Kicking the extra. <laughs> Get down and what? And the toss to Lynn, who picks up the first down before Ken Coleman, number 92, tackles him. Coach is smiling. He, he likes it. He can feel some uh, little tempo swing here, a little momentum swing. Dykes for two weeks said, boy, I don't know if we can stay in this game. That great talent up there at Ohio State. They got all the tradition of the 80,000 people. I just hope our old boys can come up there. Little old boys come up there and play. He can really Little you. old boys are doing real well. Thank you very much. First and ten now. Gill and the Red Raiders. Short drop wanted to hit that slip screen, and they may throw a flag on that. Now that was thrown backwards. Yeah, that was thrown backwards. Yes, yeah, Steve Tovar would makes the big play. Intelligent play. Absolutely. He reads it perfectly. This is why Coach Cooper says Steve Tovar has the potential to be a great one. So Tovar with a big play. They're coming right back. Sharp. When I say sharp, I mean the lateral. See, that's behind the line of scrimmage. And Manny Weather didn't realize what had happened. 
just like a linebacker. Don't go for the ball. Hit the man first. <laughs> All right. Penalty marker is down on this play. And so is the hanky. Charles Rowe. Tackle by 38, Charles Rowe. Flag down. So four turnovers in this game already. Two by each team. Ohio State and Texas Tech are scoreless here with ten and a half minutes to go. And another penalty against the Buckeyes. You know, and coming in and playing a team that you haven't played against before, and it's the first game of the season, it really is tough to get your offense really programmed and game plan to be really efficient against that strange defense. It gives you problems, especially with the young kids. And this, this tech defense is good defense. They can run. So it has not been well played so far with 55 yards in penalties and four turnovers. Well, they don't get four preseason games in this way, sure. <laughs> First and 20 for the Buckeyes. Make the running play and fly in deep trouble. And I want to tell you that Marcus Washington was coming after. I see Len Hartman, the weak side offensive guard, number 52, is not quick enough to get there at the point of attack and block Marcus Washington. He's just not getting there. Left guard, see Hartman, 52. He's not quick enough, agile enough right there to block this real fine defensive line. And he's a small defensive lineman, but he's a quick one. Emergency room. Jim Spicer, second and 20. He's sort of the tempo setter for the defense. He's the morale guy. He's the leader. Marcus Washington, number 42. Stadium very quiet now. Scotty Graham carrying the ball to the 35-yard line. Buckeye fans did not expect this one. But hey, this is quiet. I've never heard this stadium this quiet. You bet. That's credit to Tech. And Texas Tech is a team that does not play on grass. This is an artificial turf team. You've got to go back several years to a meeting with Florida State down in Tallahassee where you find the Red Raiders off their surface. Last year they went nine and three and won a ball game and played every game. The artificial card. Ooh, high high snap. snap. Fry brings it down. In open man, first down. Oh. Fumble. And it's a Red Raiders scooping it up. They can return it this year. That was Tracy Saul on a rule change. A free ball, and he alertly picks it up and returns it to the 44-yard line. So another turnover on a pass that would have given the Buckeyes a first down. Now, Greg Fry is not a scrambler. He's back in the shotgun. He gets a high snap. Now, that he loses all concentration with the coverage. He picks it up again. He's getting pressure up inside. He steps up. He throws the ball nicely. Gets put away. Now, the defense comes and does a good job of knocking it out right there. You gotta protect that ball when you're going down with both hands. I think he was down. Really? I don't have a, you know, whistle or whatever, or a striped shirt, but Olive, I thought he went down, and then the ball came free. But regardless, Olive is credited with a fumble. Red Raider ball now, and Shane Sears continues in the game at fullback. That is him going in motion. He's going to lead Lynn around the left side. Dick, you take a look at this. You probably got a better eye for something like this than I do, actually. Here he's Bobby and Olive right in the middle of your screen, number eight. He's got it tucked away. He's nicely. No, I, I don't think so. Oh, boy, that's tough. That side angle. Right? But here's this another shot. Awesome. There he is. Both feet are on the ground. Ball still there. Ball still there. Ball still there. No, it's a fumble. Yeah. He lost possession. That was a good job by Tracy Saul. And I'll say he knocked it loose was Ronald Ferguson. Was it Ferguson yeah, five? He, see, then Tracy picks that ball up. No, that was a that was a that was a real good call. And, uh, Second guessing this evening. All right, second down now. And Gill under pressure completes the pass for a first down inside the 25. He took a lick 
and delivered the pass. Watch Kaczerski coming after him as he hits Blackshear with that pass. We're going to be talking about this young man all day. He's coming from the left side of the screen. He's working on big Charlie Burgers, number 68. He has that quickness to re-accelerate and come off those blocks. He puts him on his back, but good reception downfield by Rodney Blackshear, number three. Ball at the 24-yard line. The Red Raiders with something going here after that 18-yard game. That draw play, Anthony Lynn. Tobar. And not before he got another four yards out of it. Who does Lynn remind you of, Dick, as a runner? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen enough of him. I know when you read in preparation of the game, they talk about he's built like Eric Dickerson, but I thought there was only one of those kind of guys. He doesn't make as much money as he did, anyway. Yes, he did. Yeah. Hopefully, he didn't have to pay a fine besides the. There he got levy. You know, you talk to their players, or the Tech players, they have a lot of confidence in Anthony Lynn's ability to replace James Gray. Is that draw Lynn with a spinner, but the defense was all over him that time. Spellman did a good job of getting in there. Here's big, in, big Alonzo Spellman, number 99, top part of your screen. There he is. He reads the draw this time. Different type of draw blocking. I'm not so sure there wasn't a mistake made on that. You don't turn a defensive end loose on the draw. Lynn was able to spin away from him, and then Rich Firmal brought him down. Now it's third down. Gill under pressure, gets it off to Lynn on the screen play, and Lynn staying on his feet gets a first down. What great balance on that play. The key to that play was the offensive center, Brent Martin, number 59. He did an awful good job of getting the, the kick out block. Now we're gonna take a look at this from all 22. Focus your attention, the middle of the screen, number 59, the offensive center. Watch what he does. He's working on the line of scrimmage. Now he comes down the line of scrimmage to the right side of your screen. Here he comes. He's going to get the kick out right there. Allows Lynn to get up inside. Good job, offensive center. A little extra speed coming into the game. And Anthony Stennett, a wide receiver for the Red Raiders. First and ten. Sheffield, and he is brought down hard by you-know-who. Number 58, Steve Tovar, 6'4", 240 pounds, and he has been all over the field defensively. You know, like the coaches say, say about him, he makes plays you can't coach. Take a look at Stovar, number 58. Look at him. He moves around. He's big, and he has the ability to accelerate right up into the hole, and when he hits you, he puts you down. He'll be an All-American one day. Did a great job as a sophomore coming in behind Tom Leese to deliver that blow. 58 tackles last year, three of them for losses. 13 tackles versus Michigan. Second down. Straight back. Gill was tough. There's a blown coverage. There's a man open. He didn't see him. He'll throw an incomplete. Stinnett was all alone in the right corner of the end zone. When Dick said blown coverage, he could have <laughs> lobbed it to him. Oh, Spellman got some heat on him, but I'll tell you, little Anthony Stinnett, the J.C. transfer, was over here in the right end zone all by himself. Big Spellman got those long arms in the face. Woo, they blew a coverage. I don't think Jimmy Orr was doing really more alone than he is, so <laughs> waving his hands than Stinnett was. That was before my time. You're much older than I am. <laughs> I got this great in show for it, too, buddy. Third down and nine now for the Red Raiders. So much tougher to throw the ball efficiently inside the 20 unless you invest a lot of time in, in practice. Forced out of the pocket. Penalty flag is down on the incomplete pass. Cooper, the intended receiver, and the penalty flag is down, and Gill was under pressure that time. None of these teams want to score. <laughs> well, the way this game is going, Spike Dykes and John Cooper have got to use field goal kickers here. John is probably second-guessing himself early on for that. Going for a field goal down there on that fourth and one inside the five. 
fry on the rollout was stopped. That was the big play of the game so far, and that's that's why we're scoreless right here. And it's Spike Dykes now with his best scoring opportunity. You know what you do as a coach after making that decision and you don't make it in that to go for the first down down there or the touchdown. You go back to your squad and say, listen, I made that decision because I had confidence that my big offensive line could knock somebody off the ball. It's your fault we didn't get in there, not the fact that I called it. <laughs> Move it over. Give the responsibility to somebody else. <laughs> well, we're going to take a time out here. And we'll do that, and we'll be right back. And a half. Alonzo is a size 18 with a 44-inch sleeve. Made in New Jersey. That's big. Back to you guys. Wow, there's a lot of cows that are happy he wears sneakers. I'll <laughs> tell you that. Mm. Straight back is Gill. Oh, incomplete. And now we're going to see our first field goal attempt. And that was the size 18 coming after him. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you this. You can't shoot a cannon out of a canoe. The size 18s <laughs> look pretty good, huh? Here he comes, the middle of your screen, 99 Spellman. Now he's working right there on number 66, Jason Duvall. Big man, he, actually, when you set that short as a quarterback, you've got to get rid of the ball when you set up. You can't sit there and pump it. Dick, we've got an injured Buckeye down at the 32-yard line. Alfonso Spellman, you know, and that is uh, that is his running man back there, John Kaczerski, who's played awfully well, the junior out of Riverhead, New York. John missed the whole season last year with a knee op uh, operation, hurt the knee in spring practice and missed the whole season. Really worked hard to rehab in the weight room and uh, under the supervision of Dave Kennedy and, uh, as the strength coach and trainer Billy Hill. He really worked hard to get back and he's the strongest man on the team. On this replay, watch the upper right-hand corner and we'll at the very see what top, happens here. You can see number Bill DeBose got it hit him right there in the leg. I don't know if that'll be really serious. Can't tell. Well, we certainly hope not. And meanwhile, there's another leg that's about to become important in this game. And that apparently was the plant leg down in the grass. And Coach Cooper is concerned, and of course the medical staff from Ohio State out there with him. And that is that number 24, Lynn Elliott, close by you can see 24 there. He's about to attempt a field goal. Now, this is where the absence of artificial turf might affect this game. He's not familiar with this, and we noticed during pregame warm-ups he was having a little bit of trouble. We'll cover that. And meanwhile, let me remind everybody that Monday Night Football returns to ABC, and uh, Dick, it's a good one. What about the 49ers and the Saints in New Orleans? Well... <laughs> We were talking about this ball game coming up, coming over here to do this presentation. It's got to be an outstanding game. Montana's got to be c coming on strong again. They've had a little shaky start in the preseason, but that's not at always an indication of how well they're going to play. Let's take one more look at this knee. There's Kaczerski right to the left center of your screen. You can see him right there. He's going down right in front of number 51. You can't see it any longer there. It's hard to tell. Well, we'll wait for official word from uh, downstairs on the extent of that knee, and let's, let's hope for the best. Meanwhile, let's change the subject here for a moment. Our Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week is brought to you by American Honda, who is proud to support amateur athletics. This week's award goes to Jason Hansen, a junior kicker and punter from Washington State. In last week's 21-3 season opening win over TCU, he averaged 47.7 yards on eight punts, including a 76-yarder. And Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Washington State University. And by the way, that young man is a pre-med major with a 3.79 GPA. There are the fellows who were hurt for this team last year, and uh, unfortunately, Kaczynski forced out of the game again, and uh, the way he was playing, that's not going to be an easy loss for the Buckeyes. He has had a great game here. But I don't know if it's the same knee that he injured last year. I know how John Cooper feels. That just really drains you. What you have to be careful of as a coach is you don't allow it to, to emotionally drain your squad because John Kaczynski is their guy. I mean, he looks and they look to him for leadership. Well, let's check in downstairs with Mark. The 
and he's busy trying to get us the latest on what happened to Kershaw. And we'll get that information soon. Meanwhile, here's the young man who becomes the focal point of the ball game. He was only two for six from this distance last year. Not real efficient. You should be about 75% efficient picking here normally. Last year, he was 33%. He's off to a better start this year. A year ago, Spike Dykes said he hurt the young man by sending him out, and he missed a 61-yarder with his first field goal attempt. Here he nails a 37-yarder, and it's 3-0 Texas Tech. The Red Raiders score first. Now I think we've got more information downstairs. Mark, what'd you find out now about Kaczerski? Well, I just spoke with Dr. Rob Murphy of Ohio State, and he says that it is a patellar rupture of the knee and that they're going to take him into the dressing room, evaluate at halftime, but at this point, it does not look as if he will be back for the rest of the game. Back to you. Ooh, that's too bad. Patellar rupture. Now, that means it was moved totally out of position. Well, don't hear that one very often, but it, that doesn't mean you're torn ligaments and cartilages in the inner structure of the knee. Maybe a positive if you want to find a positive. Well, for Coach Cooper, the freshman Robert Smith back on the field. He's already returned one kickoff. Gave the Buckeyes great scoring position on their first drive with a 34-yard run. Now it'll be Elliott kicking it again. Raymond Harris, number 34, is back deep with Smith. And there they are. That will be Robert Smith, the freshman. He's going out to the left toward the top. And Harris, 34. Elliott telling him what direction he's going to try to bring this kickoff now with five and a half minutes. And the Red Raiders leading the Buckeyes 3-0. They only gave up 16.3 yards of return last year. Again, a very strong kickoff coverage team. Smith at the 13. 25. There was a hole in the middle. Ran up his own man and down at the 39-yard line. Oh, pretty soon we got to see him at tailback. He looks like the real thing. You know, you know what happens to a kickoff return team when they know they have a guy back there as a return man that can break him? They do their job much better than they've ever done it before. They really do a good job. Better blocking technique, better concentration and preparation because they know they've got a guy that can put it in the end zone. 27 yard return. So now it'll be up to Greg Fry. Trying to rally this offense. They trail it by a field goal. Did not fool Mr. Washington. He's too quick for him. He has had some game over there. See, this is a naked play, meaning the quarterback's going to come out there by himself. They're pulling people away. It's a fake all away. But Washington is too quick, too well coached, and too disciplined to be beaten on that play. Rudy Maskey, the defensive end coach, has got to be proud of it. What kind of a grade would you give the Ohio State offensive line overall? Well, you'd have to give them C right now, which is very average. But what you'd have to give Texas Tech's defensive line, probably a B+. Plus. Nice. Second down and 18 now. A fly behind this inexperienced line. Incomplete and another fine play by Walker. He got over and deflected that ball away. And unfortunately, the news is not good from downstairs. That is the same leg that Kaczerski injured last year. Ruptured patella, certainly gone for the remainder of this game. And uh, you hate to speculate, but but obviously it puts the entire season in, in jeopardy for him. And up, gee, they put they put the grass in here, feeling that it was much safer. And uh, then would you know it, they wind up with a ruptured knee injury right here in the, uh, in the first half. Third and 18. Out of the shotgun, and the first time we have seen that look. Gets his protection. Steps up. And hits number two, Bernard Edwards. Matt Wingo is there defensively. They are not killing these linebackers like they expected to. 
No, well, see, right there, they were in a, like a prevent defense in that long yard situation. He wanted to go downfield further for the first down, but the coverage did a good job and forced him to go to the underneath man here, Bernard. Edwards right there, number two. Good job of defense at taking it away downfield. High snap. Bowman brings it down, gets it off. Remember, Saul fumbled one earlier in the game, picks it up on the bounce and gets it to the 24-yard line where with 3.48 to go, it will be the Red Raiders' ball. All right, so it's Red Raider ball. And Dick, talk about the confidence level of the Red Raiders at this point. Here they are, first time they've ever played Ohio State. Sellout crowd up by a field goal in the first half. Well, they've certainly not intimidated. They didn't come in here just overwhelmed by the fact that they're playing in front of 89,000 people and in, in the Big Ten for the first time. Not intimidated at all. Well-coached football team. Probably will be as good as they were last year, if not better. Better on defense probably already. Bill, Anthony Lynn. Stepping in. What's your impression of Lynn who has replaced the great James Gray at Texas Tech? It's tough to evaluate on running backs until they give him an opportunity to get, you know, at least to the linebackers cleanly. The defensive line play of uh, Ohio State, they've been doing a good job at knocking him off course. And they really haven't given him a chance to clear that line of scrimmage. What kind of a grade would you give Gill? I think he can play better from having watched, but I'll tell you what, he's been under a lot of pressure, so tough to evaluate. Go a toss. And Ooh, Lynn and Quinn. And he's forced out of bounds by Denny Clark on the seven. He's good block. They knock down the outside linebacker, Jay Cook, number 82. Real nice job by the tight end. You can see who he was there. Third and home. short as a result. The Red Raiders trying to grind it out here late in the first half. Three minutes to go. This is a second unit offensive line in there right now. They're doing a nice job. Shane Sears leads the way. Good job. Lynn spins and there's a penalty marker down. Foster Paul. Jason Simmons, number 91, playing in place of John Kaczynski. Did a real nice job on that play. Another penalty. Here's Jason Simmons, the red shirt freshman, six foot five, 255 pounds. There's the coach, you know, sooner or later. <laughs> Hey, yesterday, they were giving him a schedule, not coach. Yeah. You're going to get the troopers. They're going to bring the buses on out. Red light's not going to stop. Going to get you right to the stadium. Coach, the network wants you to come on the field. About 310, come back. Home. Coach, what's the last thing you do back in the dressing room? You looked at the fellow and you said, pray. <laughs> you know, I was reading some materials about Coach uh, Spike Dykes, and uh, he said he was born in a little tiny town in Texas called Oasis. He said it was so small that when he went into first grade, he had to go in at five years old, so there'd be two kids in the first grade class. <laughs> you want to know how he got his name? No, I don't know. Well, we asked him yesterday. All right. As Mike said, see, you don't know the story. He said when he was, his mama was pregnant, there was a character in Dick Tracy named Spike Dykes. And his daddy loved Dick Tracy. And so his daddy's buddy said, you got to name him Spike. <laughs> and he said, my real first name is William. And he said, I was William for all of about 30 minutes. <laughs> or less. <laughs> Texas Tech, 4.3. And 89, 1.4 and Today, you got to give... Ohio State defense for credit. And Lynn trying to step outside and a good defensive play by Brian Cook, number 29. Spellman did a good job. Alonzo Spellman did a good job of forcing him out there. Now, Spellman will show on the right side of your screen. You'll see 99 flash in. He closes that hole. He works inside out. Then he turns him loose right out there to, to Mr. Cook, Brian Cook, number 29. 
Let's see if the Buckeyes go after this one. No, they're returning. That's a low line drive. It's Graham at the 40. Out to the 46. They Good. got two minutes with which to work here after a 35 yard punt and a six yard return. Jeff That's Scotty Graham, who was injured, like he sprained his ankle. <laughs> you lose your number one defensive player, and now you lose your number one offensive player. It's a gloomy day. Tyrone Harrison into that backfield with Dante Lee. Fake to Lee and complete to Graham. Number 84, Jeff Graham. And that was a tough hit there by Sammy Walker. You don't make a living trying to get yards off one Sammy Walker. I'm impressed with how he plays. You know, he has 13 brothers and sisters. You learn to play defense in a family that big. You bet. Just to eat. That's exactly right. You've got to get to that table in a hurry <laughs> and grab for the biscuits quickly. <laughs> that was a fine defensive play. You're going to complete some of those outs, but when you're right there in his ear, many times you can knock it loose. Made it into the first half. Faking the draw again. Defensive pressure comes through and almost an interception by Rowe. Fred Petty, number 77, got inside. See, that was going to be a screen play again. They were going to go off play action and throw the screen, and Fred Petty knew the quarterback had the ball the whole time, and he was going after him. There are going to be some unhappy fans in Columbus. This is an Ohio State team which closed out last season by losing to Michigan, to Auburn in its bowl game, and now they are scoreless at home in the first half against Texas Tech. That's a sin in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> we just listen to him going off here. Third down and four. Fry trying to come up with a big play. Incomplete through behind Dante Lee. And the word from downstairs, strained left ankle. Suffered by Scotty Graham, so we don't know if he'll be back. I kind of doubt he'll be back this game. Well, it hurts him. Now, he's the kind of guy who wouldn't show pain. Bowman. They have ice underneath that wrapping there. The ice there. That way. Nice punt. Nice punt. Saul fake the fair catch and then let it go on into the end zone. So the ball will come out of the 20. 48-yard punt. A minute and a half now for the Red Raiders who lead it by a field goal. And coming up at halftime, we're going to have the conventional halftime report. Roger Twyman. We're coming to you with all the scores and the highlights. The Longhorns of Texas beating Penn State today. And Beth Royak will report on Florida State. Will it go ACC or SEC? Also, the Prudential Play of the Week and ABC News will have a report on the Bush Gorbachev Summit meeting now going on. That's all coming your way here at halftime when we finish a minute and a half. Dick, what's your overview of what we've seen here so far? I know you've got to be really surprised. Well, I think both defensive lines are dominating the offensive line and dominating the line of scrimmage. Therefore, the offenses have really been shut down. The defensive line. I think that's on the offensive line. Probably dominate a little too quickly. Are they on that right side? <laughs> yeah. They figure, well, if we can't beat them on the snap count, if we go a count early, maybe we can handle it. See, they were on the bench this last series, too. The second unit offensive line uh, was in. So here they're coming in on their first play, and they lost a little rhythm. We have a dead ball. Ball starts on the offense. First down. 135 on the clock. You can see why Texas Tech was a good football team last year. Now, this is a, a result of last year, and uh, they're going to be a solid, solid club. Take that ball back on the 15. Spike Dykes would be satisfied to run the clock out of this situation if he can, but the Buckeyes have a couple of timeouts for him. 
Now Lynn is down at the 13 yard line and quickly they stop the clock. Tommy Lee's did a real nice job, number 81, of containing that. Then the down lineman came inside out. How much time do we have here right now? I can't see. 129. You know, John Cooper told me on the practice field Thursday, he says, you know, people are talking about my inexperienced offensive line, but deep down in, I'm a little more concerned about my defense, because for the last two years, we haven't played good defense. Granted, we have better players now, but I, that's where my concern is as we start the season. staff together down there. That's Bill Young, the defensive coordinator, to his left. His son, Young John, right behind him. Oh, there's a man who can win some big ones. Yeah. Buster Douglas, the heavyweight champion of the world. He's going to come out and, uh, you know, one of the great traditions here at Ohio State is Dottie in the eye. And he'll be one who will receive that honor here at halftime with the Ohio State band. Maybe we get a chance to show you that. You know, one of the things that I missed about not being around the Big Ten the last year is they have such great bands in this show. Oh, they do, and the Buckeyes have a great band. They really do. So we get a chance late in our halftime presentation. We saw them practicing some yesterday, remember? You bet. Now they run the draw play. Fumble. And they try to take it away from and they signal that they do. They did fumble. And that was Brent Johnson, number 30, who wrapped the ball up. Number 30 got the football and gave Ohio State an opportunity with 1.20 to go. It's a draw play, but I think it's Rich Frimmel, number 90, a defensive lineman that causes the fumble. I can't see where he comes from right now. He's out the, on the offensive right guard. He works back inside. No, it was, it was like you said, Brent Johnson all the way that caused it, number 30, backup linebacker. He, he reaches in and out and grabs the ball with his left hand and gets it knocked out. It was not for me. The ball is at the Red Raider 15-yard line. We've got 120 to go. Buckeyes trail it by three. Fry will try to get the crowd down in the horseshoe quiet. The freshman is in. Robert Smith has checked in for the first time. 32 is with 39. Straight back for Fry. Under pressure, he'll take it off. Out of bounds at the 11-yard line. They'll mark the ball. Ohio State. Jim Crow, the offensive coordinator, and his staff said they've invested a lot more time of throwing the ball inside the 20 yard area this year than in the past. 115. You know, this is really a pressure cooker for, for a freshman. Ordinarily, you'd like to give him a series about at midfield. Well, they were trying to get him out of the backfield that time uh, to throw to him, but uh, Mr. Rowe, the outside linebacker, number 38, he just wouldn't let him get out there. can run with it and that was Charles Rowe number 38 the big play linebacker <laughs> Tyrone Harrison was the fumble just a fullback snap play out of the I formation you'll see the quarterback insert the ball nicely reverse pivot tailback Smith he gets it in there right now he's going up inside he's got a little loose that was his fault running back air all the way all his fault he let the ball get out away from his body. Watch Matt You Wayne have to keep that. To Seeing that right arm, the elbow out away from the body, you've got to keep it in tight, especially in the intense area. Good job of recovering it. Coach, we've had seven turnovers in the first half. That's Four horrible. by the puck out. That's a season. Well, they lost 14 fumbles on the season last year with 10 interceptions. They gave it away 424. They've already given it away four times today. Stop with 101 showing here. Let's check in with Mark Jones, who's got the champ with him. Mark? 
Brent, you talk about teams looking for the knockout punch like Texas Tech and Ohio State. Well, I got a guy with quite a knockout punch, James Buster Douglas, the heavyweight champ of the world. James, what's in the plans? I hear you're dotting the eye today. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. Uh, um, well, tomorrow we're leaving to finish open up camp in uh, Las Vegas to prepare for the upcoming bout in uh, October 25th against Evander Holyfield. Big football game? Big football game. Uh, I think this is working out a few kinks right now. I think they'll be coming back a little stronger in the second half. Any advice for the coach, John Cooper? Well, I just keep plugging away. You know, it's the first game of the season. And, you know, you got a young, a great crop of uh, players out there. And uh, I, I'm sure they'll come back and uh, do well in the second half. What's life been like being the champ and being a local guy here at Columbus? Well, it's been great, man. I wouldn't want to turn back the clock for no reason <laughs> at all. You know, it's been uh, a beautiful blessing, you know. And, and, and uh, like I said, I wouldn't want to turn it back for no reason at all. Thanks for joining us. And it uh, looks like you'd make a pretty good linebacker yourself. Guys, back to you. Solid analysis by the champ, I might add, too. Mm -hmm. Try to settle this young team down. With the final minute ticking away here in Columbus. Buckeyes took the opening kickoff, marched down inside the Red Raider five-yard line. On fourth down, they went for the touchdown, did not make it. And then the turnovers began. We've had seven of them in the first half. The Red Raiders have the only score. That was a field goal by Lynn Elliott. 37 yarder by Elliott here in the second quarter and that's all the scoring we've had and the injury news not good for the Buckeyes they've lost Koshersky and also Scotty Graham Koshersky certainly for the game and it looked like Scotty was going to be gone for the afternoon too so that's going to wrap it up here and you remember now Roger Clybos coming your way with the Prudential scoreboard in just a moment Illegal procedure, honey offense, third down. I asked him, you know, what type of pass he likes to throw, and he says he really doesn't have a, a favorite. He just likes the offense that Coach Dick Winder has prepared for him. There's a wide variety of, uh, of types of passing, and he was looking forward to getting the chance to display it today. Well, they got a third and 12 to deal with here. You know, they're pretty good in this, right? That's right. He's going to put it up. He gets good time complete to number three Rodney Blackshear the junior who missed most of last season because of an injury he breaks wide open on this play here it is third and long watch the play action fake watch the running back here now Lynn he fakes quarterback fake that freezes the rushers slows it down you see there people didn't even know he still had the ball here comes the crossing pattern which takes an awfully long time he gets it in between the rolled up corner playing short outside and the deep safety playing deep outside 29 more yards for Gill and the Red Raiders and now they're to the Buckeye 42 with a first down and the offset eye good fake to Lynn under pressure in come that away. you bet he did he threw that away Greg Smith was right there Greg Smith, a walk-on in spring of 88. He red-shirted. No scholarship. He earned a scholarship. In the middle of your screen, you'll see the nose guard, number 57, up here, right up the gut. Here he'll come. Good pressure outside by Jason Simmons, number 91. It gets blocked. Now here comes Smith, right in there. Puts the helmet right on the football. Greg Smith, an honor student, all Big Ten academic team. Second and ten. So Gill didn't take the sack that time by getting off the incomplete pass. And the ball is loose on the ground. The ball came loose that time. He might have been already down. Frimmel hit Sheffield right away. And he's ruled down right there. Cooper's got to be turning a little bit. A lot tougher not to be playing well in your home stadium <laughs> for a coach. When I, when I was coaching the Eagles the first couple of years, we weren't very good. I really liked playing on the road. <laughs> <laughs> they don't boo you on the road. Third down and nine. Straight back. Incomplete. And good defense. Down. 
Brian Cook really made a good defensive play. He's a strong safety. He comes in as a nickelback in those third and long situations. Good coverage. See that red mouthpiece and the day lights on his helmet? That's a rule this year. You can't wear a, a white or gray. They have to be a color. Red, orange, a bright color. Graham is back deep. So far, DeLagerheim has held up. Graham will let this one go inside the five, and it rolls into the end zone for a touchback, and it'll come out on the 20-yard line after the 41-yard punt. Texas Tech shutting out Ohio State by a field goal. We're coming right back. Winning. It's more than a word. It's the spirit that's driving everything we do. And it's why more people depend on Chevrolet than any other car. From the people who push them to their limit to the men and women who drive them home, more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. I know about Little Lawns. Little Lawns. Big lawn. Big lawn? Real big lawn. Want to know any more? Ask Ace. Let me tell you. There's a new attitude at Northwest Airlines, a new dedication to service. You can see it in our on-time performance, the best of the top seven U.S. airlines. That's our commitment, to make sure you're on time for your commitments. Sharp. When I say sharp, I mean facts. The right facts for every budget and every business. I mean affordable high-tech facts with dial cards for touch panel calling. Innovative facts that can tell voice Hello? from data. High-performance laser facts for documents virtually as clear as the original. Technology that's made sharp number one in fax sales three years running. When I say sharp, I mean business. The nation's top teams go head-to-head -head in exciting interconference matchups. Three great regional games live on ABC's College Football next Saturday. First and ten now for the Buckeyes coming out. Their own 20-yard line. Trailing Texas Tech, the Red Raiders by a field goal. And this is Harris, the tailback. Now, when you went to commercial, perhaps you saw Spike Dykes on the Texas Tech sideline, speaking rather forcefully to punter Mike DeLagerheim. What was he unhappy about, Ghost? He either wanted him to punt the football out of bounds, say like inside the five, or pooch punt it and get it up there so the coverage could get it. Actually, they only made 21 yards on that punt because he kicked it on into the end zone. He must uh, really emphasize that kicking game. Well, he's a special teams coach. And he is ahead because of the field goal right now. Now fly, straight back, backs come out. Incomplete and another splendid defensive play by Matt Wingo. They haven't done much with any of their possessions so far in that first half. Starting out slow here. Look at this. First drive, they did a good job. From then on, Tech's defense has just shut them down. Punt, interception, fumble, punt, punt, fumble. Can't get much worse. Third down and eight, and Robert Smith has checked into the game. Try to slide him out, and they do. They don't look to him, but they go complete for the first down, and they hit Edwards. So the Buckeyes keep it moving as Greg Fry hits a third down pass, and Dubisky comes up to make that stop, number 23. What they did is bring Bernard Edwards, number two, the big six foot, 595 pound wide receiver, in as a tight end, and then split him out. And they split him out there and worked against the man to man coverage. You'll see him top left hand corner of your screen. Good protection. Five step drop, sets, throws the ball in nice timing. Not poorly covered, just misread or misjudged trying to break it up. But Ron Ferguson was right there with him. Olive brings the play in from the sideline. They have three wide receivers right now. Fumble, Fry fumbles a snap, picks it up, and completes it to Olive, who spins free. Still on his feet. Down to the 33-yard line with Witherspoon finally bringing him down. What a great run after the catch. 
Dusty. Now, you're not looking at just a wide receiver. You're looking at a wide receiver that has also been a punt return specialist. And you throw the, throw the quick hit. He drops the ball, maintains great concentration, picks it up, and lets it go. Now he catches a quick hit and becomes a punt returner with the football. Poor tackling at the point of attack. Wingo misses him right there, number 45. He's still running like a punt returner. Good job. Our guys with the ball at the Red Raider 32. Smith swinging free to the outside and the young man battles his way inside the 25 and the crowd loves the appearance of number 32. He looked good. But I'll tell you, I was impressed with the play of Stephon Weatherspoon, number 13, the outside linebacker. Did you see him whap that fullback and want to try to block him? The speed, he still got outside. Oh, those linebackers. Yeah. Oh, they have good throw in the first half. Yeah. Wingo has delivered some blows. All three of them. Here's Rob Smith again, taking another look at him. Big toss back there. Now watch Weatherspoon. He knocked that tackle right back in his face. That was Peterson, number 75. He'll come out there a little more aggressive next time. Second and two. And here comes the young man who swings free to the left. Has the first down. You can see he has that flash. And that was Sammy Walker. Speed on speed there. Oh, uh, yeah. Walker, Walker can run faster. Now, Smith is a young man that won the state 100-yard meter, rather, 100-meter championship as a junior when he finished second as a senior. Look at the quick feet. Now, he's a little bit of a long strider. A little bit of a long strider, but he still has the mobility. Good tackling, and the best place to tackle a real good running back is up high. Sam Walker does a good job. And again, they will use the freshman from Euclid as a lone running back right now, double tight end and two wide outs in this formation with first and 10 and the ball at the Red Raider 23. Off the draw and not fooled is number 42, Marcus Washington. See, uh, they didn't get any block back on the back side of that play. Marcus Washington is too quick to be turned loose without someone checking backside, meaning blocking away from the direction of the play. Boy, he's a good football player. I'm impressed with him. He's a pre-law student, member of the National Honor Society in high school. Fine quickness. Smith leaves and Dante Lee checks in. Tyrone Harrison is the fullback. He replaced the injured Scotty Graham. Now fly. Rolling to the right. Complete and a sensational play by number six, Tracy Saul. Good movement. Good movement. Here's the young man who had eight interceptions last year. Coming out on the rollout to get a little away from the inside rush. Gets a good block, cleanup block. Dante Lee throws the ball where he has to throw it high into the outside. But good defensive play there by the safety. Would have been caught out of bounds offensively. Now it's third and nine. Smith is back into the backfield. Split to the right. Quarterback draw. A quarterback draw. And he is down at the 15-yard line with Sammy Walker and Charles Rowe. 25 and 38. And if you're going to go up against those two, you're not going to get much. No. Very, very active football players. It's a true All-American candidate. And you can see that for his performance here today. They, they really like him. Butkus Award nominee. Plays with his head. Tim Williams comes in now, and this field goal would tie it from 32. He has not kicked a field goal in varsity competition. And he gets that one. He's perfect so far. Ohio State three, Texas Tech three. We're coming right back. So I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along on this overcast afternoon here in Columbus. Drizzle just a little bit at halftime has remained pretty much threatening here throughout the ball game. And there's the young man who tied it up. You know, his high school coach used to put him on pressure pressure situations in the practice field, making him kick long ones. And if he made it, the kids didn't have to run wind sprints. And if he didn't make it, they had to run. They put pressure on him every day. Good teaching. That wasn't a very good kick. And it'll 
go out of bounds to cost him. Well, there's a new president here at Ohio State. Let's go down and meet him with Mark Jones. Mark? Brent, I've got President Gordon Gee, the new president here at Ohio State University. Mr. Gee, you've got big fans already. I see people giving you presents, cookies, everything. Isn't that great? Uh, I think that uh, it just shows the warmth of this community and the great place that I've come to. I love Ohio State. Now, you were at West Virginia when they made their national title run. You were at Colorado when they made theirs last year. Now you're here at Ohio State. Uh, what's this I hear about you making predictions about a national championship? Well, uh, obviously that's the reason they hired me, not, not for any <laughs> academic excellence. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is Ohio State has a great tradition. Uh, they uh, have great support from their uh, community and from their fans, and the university community supports them. I think that this is a place where uh, traditions will prevail. Thanks for joining us, and uh, hopefully you'll get a good outcome here. Uh, I'm very hopeful. Thank you. Brent? Thank you, Mark. That's what I like is a honest man. Well, I'll tell you what I would like if I were a football coach is a president today in, in, in NCAA situations that loves this athletic program. Yes. We need all of them we can get. Yes, sir. 8.30 to go. Third quarter. Texas Tech 3, Ohio State 4. Low ground ball kick fielded by Blackshear. Brought down by Tom Leach. <laughs> There's some brand new. <laughs> I guarantee you that is a brand new one. Yeah, well, they, they had to trade, uh, trade in the vacuum cleaner they were using on the old one. The Hoover for the tour. Yeah, Are they both sponsors? Do we give them a pop? I don't know. <laughs> First and ten for Gill and the Red Raiders. Set eye formation. First time they've ever played the Big Ten team. Good defense. Lynn is hit by from Rich Trimble. He's playing very well at the point of attack. He put a big tattoo on his leg, believe it or not. A couple. I don't know if his mother knows about it, but if, if she's not here and she's listening, I don't think he can like this big lion on his calf. <laughs> well, she likes it if it's, it's a lion. It's not her name. No, it's a lion. <laughs> what makes kids do that? Good football player. Fine student, academic all Big Ten last year. Second down and nine for Gill and the Red Rose. First to move to the left on the one it is short. Yeah. And his good right man was well covered that time by Foster Paul, number 22. Foster did a nice job. Did a very nice job. Foster Paul can run, too. He's a 10-6, a 100-meter guy. Where do they get all the speed? Bump and run coverage. He was running with him man to man. There's where they get the speed, Sarasota, Florida. Yes, indeed. They've got a great alumni yeah. group down in Sarasota and, uh, and also over in Miami watching Ohio State, obviously like to see a little more point production and uh, good defense that time by the Buckeyes. He was all over as you watch Park there on that replay. Now it is third and ten. 7.40 to go in the third. They're coming after him. Incomplete. Wanted Lynn coming out of the backfield and Tovar had him. See, he is just not getting enough time to set up and throw the football. I would recommend they come with some more screens and draws, even if it's on third down. Get the screens back into the game and slow down that rush. It's easy to call plays up here. The resident genius every Saturday. He never made a mistake. Never there. made a mistake. <laughs> you did some of my games. You know I made some mistakes. <laughs> I was helping you. <laughs> This punter is marginal. They're going to have to find a better punter. He hasn't punted the ball well yet. And uh, this is the first game. And hopefully he'll get better. But he's a walk-on. Coach Dykes recruited a J.C. fellow. And uh, he can have some problems, too. We're coming right back. You can see it as being a, a little bit uh, overdone. But, uh, you know, nothing that anybody has ever said has affected me as a player, positive or negative. Uh, no, no, you know, I earned... Uh, all state my my junior year in high school and it didn't help me when I went out there my senior year I didn't go out on the field and said hey I was all state last year you got to let me score a touchdown or anything like that and it's definitely not going to work into the transition in, into college football I mean they say uh, high school hero college zero uh, I'm not going to let that happen myself of course but uh, you know it's, it's been a little bit overdone but you don't have to look at the paper you don't have to watch TV you don't have to hear that stuff so it, it doesn't really bother me folks the young man is really something uh, SAT's 1200 Better than a three-point grade point average, and uh, he wants to go into medicine. 
And the man who recruited him here was not a football coach. The one he wanted to see, Dick Vermeil, was John Frank, a med student here at school, former All-American football player here, and also a great all football player with the 49ers. Short in his career, going to med school, and he's the young man that recruited Robert Smith. In fact, he didn't even visit the coaches. Boy, the woe continues to mount here for the, the Buckeyes as Jeff Ellis, the son of Jimmy Ellis, wins off again. He, of course, missed last season after tearing up a knee in that game against USC. They'll play the Trojans again, and that one will be right here in Columbus. So that was just cramps. The cramps that's the report from the uh, sideline. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second down and, uh, and eight now. Oh! Whoa, coming through was Fred Petty. Now, he's another one of those Juco youngsters that we've talked about. 32 sacks in two years of junior college, and you can see why. Again, they're not blocking him at the point of the attack. It's a, try to sucker him. He's in the left corner of your screen. He's coming up inside. They're turning him loose to try to fake and get him to go down the line of scrimmage, then come out. Didn't work. You're not going to fool him. Inside of your seat. There he slants all the way out into the plate. They had a slant on. They slanted right in the direction of the bootleg. Boy, good call, defensive coordinator. Carl Maynard's going to feel good about that call. Third and 13 is what it brings up. The protective pocket gave him time, and a pass is dropped by Graham as Rowe was coming up to game. defend it, but he certainly dropped one he should have had. You either hear footsteps or you take your eye off the ball in that situation. I mean, because that was a well-thrown ball. It should have been caught. A delay underneath. And many times you, you, your eyes wander and you see that defender coming and you lose your concentration. You say, oh, I'm going to get a headache. But he's a tough guy. He should have made that catch. We've had a lot of concentration broken in this game, haven't we? Yep. Holman. Punts it. There's a uh, Saul at the 35. Got a hole. Middle return. And he got it back to the 45. There's that 10-yard return. He had a misfortune of fumbling the first one he handled today, but he's been perfect ever since. 44-yard punt and the 10-yard return again. It'll be a Red Raider ball. 5.50 to go. Tied at a field goal apiece. But the Red Raider offense hasn't been able to do much here lately. I think personally, now if I were up here running the offense, I'd get, I'd get into those three receivers, spread them out real good, throw your quick game, and run your screens and draws and that kind of stuff, and don't take them on physical field. Or spend too much time doing it. Just spend up to keep mine. trying to replace James Gray, and we had an opportunity to ask quarterback Jim about replacing his great running back of a year ago. Well, he's a great running back, and uh, he did many great things for the school, but Anthony Lynn, you know, he's filling his shoes this year, and he's going to be a great running back for us. He's a different type runner. James was elusive, missed tacklers, and, uh, you know, Anthony's not afraid to lower his head and run him over, so he's going to, you know, do a good job for us. James Gray, in that victory over Duke, ran for 280 yards in the All-America Bowl. Gill that put it up. Got down the sideline, he's got him. Anthony Lynn. Touchdown, Red Raiders. That's one way to replace him, folks. Well executed play coming out of the backfield down the sideline got man coverage everybody else taken out of there nobody ran with him good play good call a 52 yard scoring play by Texas Tech Jamie Gill the junior to junior Anthony Lynn and he does the rest and we have got to credit the coaching staff with a great call on that play, getting Lynn out of the backfield, and then Gill delivered the strike. And now Elliott adds the extra point. Our first touchdown of the day, and here's another look. 
He drops straight back in a pedal technique. He's swinging out of the backfield. See, he's looking one way and then comes back. He knew where he wanted to go. He looked left to keep the defense looking left. And you can see he was isolated that time on Mark Williams, a redshirt freshman linebacker, number 51. Not a match. Taking another look. Here he is. Nice poise in the pocket. Throws the strike. Linebacker can't run with him. Uh, Foster Polk, I'm not sure what coverage he was in, but he wasn't where he would have liked to have been. So Gill lights up that scoreboard here in Columbus with this touchdown pass. He is joined by some 2,500 fans. He purchased all the tickets that were available for the Texas Tech backers, and a lot of them have driven up here from West Texas, Lubbock, Texas, and they're enjoying it right now as the Red Raiders tasting Big Ten water for the first time. And they lead Ohio State 10-3. Five minutes in the third quarter, and I want to tell you who the heat is on right now, folks. Mr. Cooper. I wonder if they will consider putting Kent Graham in at quarterback, the big, strong arm drop back passer somewhere here along, and if, if they feel he might give them a spark. Because so far, offensively, Texas Tech's defense has just really shut him down. There are the deep men. Elliott's ready. Harrison Smith will wait to kick off. Low, and it will be Harris. Ooh, hammered at the 22. You know, I mentioned Lubbock, Texas. Texas Tech has one of the largest campuses in area of any that I've ever visited. Had a great time down there a few years ago. Let's take a look now at the Lubbock, Texas Tech campus. Like the land that surrounds it, Texas Tech University and Health Sciences Center offers those that venture into its boundaries endless horizons. It is this that inspires the discovery of test tube cotton, the search for a more fuel efficient auto, a computer network linking rural hospitals, ways to defend ourselves against the ravages of nature, and the study of Texas celebrated wine industry. Texas Tech, a university with an exciting future and endless horizons. And their football team is ahead right now. 10 to 3. Smith is into the backfield. Fry out the fake throws. Incomplete to Jeff Ellis, who is back on the field. You can see that Big Jeff can't run like he could when he was 248 pounds. He's now at 263, and he's at the fat man's table, the training table. He's got to lose a few pounds, but he was down the hole. Dick, how big a shocker would this be? You and I agree that Ohio State came into this about 17 points better on paper. They don't win any football games on paper, as everyone knows. Now, I think you can see the screen starting to show just a little bit right now on that Ohio State sideline. We've got 4.50 to go. You have been praising Spike Dyke's special teams to the skies. Here. I think they've been doing a real good job and are making a contribution to good field position, uh, no returns, and that kind of thing, and uh, other than the one kickoff return early in the ball game. Well, a procedure penalty against Ohio State. It is now first and 15. The ball is down inside the 20-yard line at the 18-yard line. Third Raider linebackers are looking for someone to hit again. Throws it out to Smith. Now Wingo gets over and he breaks free from him before he's out of bounds. And the crowd comes alive as Witherspoon finally gets on him. But the young man busted a tackle. Talent do make a difference. <laughs> First thing we had was good protection. Gave him time. Running back coming out of the backfield. Snuck across to the right, left of your screen. Here he goes. Good power in the legs. Long strider, yes. But he shortens it up right there, and he gets good power. People not doing a good enough job of tackling. Hitting him with his shoulder pads. You've got to use those arms. You know what's happening to Ohio State here. Right? They're waiting for somebody to make no, the big no, play no, for him. What? This is the curse of Bino Cook. Oh, Bino Cook. <laughs> Bino Cook. You don't believe him, do you? Win the national championship. 10-3. to yeah. three. 4.40 to go. You don't believe him, do you? There's the toss to Smith. And he's got an alley. Cuts back. Breaks free at the 30. And out of bounds with Dubisky. Finally forcing him out after a run of 39 yards.
Normally, when that play goes well, the eye toss, the tight end does a great job of blocking. There's no one at the corner there. Peterson gets a hook block, but I really think the key was Ellis. There's a good block for the wide receiver downfield. Gets him in free, and Bobby Olive's coming over to try to get a screen block. Taking another look. Toss deep. Guards pulling around. I really believe the key to the whole play was the block by Jeff Ellis at the point of attack. And, of course, good speed. He takes a break now, and Dante Lee checks in. First and ten for the Buckeyes. Inside the Red Raider point. And they bring the short man, Harrison. And Tracy Saul pounds him to the ground. But not before he batters his way close to the ten-yard line. We're going to take one more look at that from the end zone and see if Jeff Ellis was the key to the six. To the right of your screen, the big tight end. You can barely see him. Number 89, there he is blocking the, yeah, he has the defensive end hook right there. And holds him off long enough to get that corner turn. Good block. Did you see the young man looking back at that defense in case they'd over pursue? He's going to cut back. You bet. We got the real thing down here. Ohio's Mr. Football for two straight years. And what a fine young man. Now lone setback. Weaves his way through. Cuts back. And Saul again forced to make the stop. That's just great running. I mean, you're just, yeah. you're watching a natural here. Okay, it's daylight running, and I really believe the best thing Ohio State does is zone block, come off man-to-man -man block like that. They over-pursue, he gets cut back, he gets up inside. Good window was blocked there. He tries to get back into the play. He couldn't do it, number 45. But then <laughs> the official gets in Mike Lissio, number 91's way. Robert Smith with six carries for 64 yards and some in the crowd saying, Coach Cooper, what took you so long? Well, hey, I don't blame Coach Cooper for waiting. You know, they have a, another freshman running back that they think is just as good so can't shoot up today. First and goal. There's the pitch to Smith. He runs for the corner. Touchdown, Ohio State. Red Raiders out of West Texas and we got ourselves a ball game Mr. Vermeil. You know I think also this young man Robert Smith has picked up the emotional side of the game for the offensive football team. They appear to be a little more pumped up out there. Taking a look from the end zone a deep toss. See they fake it inside and toss it out there that fake inside freezes the linebackers just enough to get, allow him to get outside one step on Wingo. When the sports information director, Steve Snap, called me and said, we have assigned Mr. Smith number 32, I said, oh boy, they know they've got one. That's <laughs> one of the big time numbers in all the sports. Yeah. You go back to the likes of Sandy Koufax, Jimmy Brown. Yeah, I think the big thing they've got to be careful of, and Coach Cooper is aware of this, they can't make this kid a Heisman Trophy winner until the day that he earns it because they can put pressure on him way too soon in early. He'll be handled pressure, but uh, I just think it's, it could be unjust. I just got a call from NBC, a guy by the name of O.J. Simpson, so that it was somebody else who won 32. Oh, yeah, O.J. what? <laughs> I've forgotten all about him. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Blackshear and Allen are back deep. 10 all now with 3.13 to go in the third. Yeah. Now the Raiders looking for a lift. Allen will try it. Good tackling. Out to the 24, and that was Brent Johnson. Remember that huge turnover that he forced. Yeah. Knocking the ball free and recovering it himself. Did a good job on it. You know, Brett Johnson's playing linebacker. He was a fine running back. Scored 23 touchdowns as a running back. Here he is as a linebacker. Hey, that long 97-yard touchdown run uh, in the scrimmage two weeks ago by that young man Smith was no fluke. 
He can do it. Now, <laughs> let's not forget about number 22 on the Red Raiders side of the ball. I think it's number uh, nine, Jamie Gill, is going to make the difference in this one. All right. Anthony <laughs> Lynn is that tailback that Jamie Gill yep. sent out of the backfield for their touchdown. Shane Sears is the fullback. Quick drop. Oh, it's dropped over here by Blackshear. Was that a lateral? No, it wasn't. We've had one it, it was a forward pass, I think. It was a forward pass, I think. There is a different tempo being played out there right now by the Buckeyes. This is a clever little play where they put a man in motion. You'll see a running back coming in motion, and he's going to kick out a defender. See him now working right up to the left corner of your screen. He's going to block out, and they're going to try to run a quick screen up inside that block. You drop the ball, you can't run the screen. This is a second and ten. Gill, under pressure, throws and did complete it to Sears, fortunately. What a dangerous throw. Was it dangerous? He was hit by Frimmel going down, and he put it up. And fortunately for him, Sears was there. There he is, Rich Frimmel. The honor student wants to be a history teacher. That aggressive, tough guy. Northeast Ohio lineman of the year coming out of high school. And he's got another year. But it left him with third and ten. Back. Going down that left sideline again. And incomplete. Intended for Chris Notton. Well, down on the sideline is our Mark Jones. Mark, it had to be a great feeling for Robert Smith when he came off the field. It really wasn't, Brent. Uh, what happened was, after his great bit of running, he ended up vomiting for about two minutes. So it tells you a bit about the physical nature of this game. But still, time to suck it up and get to work. And he's giving us the impression that he's very calm and cool. And, hey, you know, pressure doesn't bother me. You know, I was impressed with was Mark. He was listening to me. It wasn't a great moment. They came after the punter that time. So the punting game is between the Red Raiders. Yeah, he's, the young man has been struggling. They changed punters this time. That's the JC transfer you were talking about. And he has been having a very difficult time. That is Vaughn Hall. Transferred in. And this gives the Buckeyes the ball inside the 35, only an 11-yard punt. So there's one part of that special team we better stop raving about. Yeah. And that's the man pulling the trigger on the punt. Now Smith is back, as you would imagine. Butterflies are gone. Harrison's the fullback. Scotty Graham out with an injury. He gets the handoff. They came through. Kenneth Banks was one, but I want to tell you that Stefan Weatherspoon also came in on that. He has been playing well all the game. Here's I toss to the left. Concentration on the left side of the screen. A slant. They were slanting the defense to the wide side of the field and they beat the offensive blockers on those inside gaps. Mr. Weatherspoon. He, he, that guy right there is a fine student and a fine football player. I talked to him on the field yesterday. He is really put together. 14. Fly under pressure. We'll try to get away from Rowe. Gets it complete to the hands of Smith. Smith is inside the 20-yard line. Sammy Walker in hot pursuit. 17 more yards, and Rowe almost shut down Fry before he could get it off. Here again, now he's coming out of the backfield. Smith, right corner of your screen here. He sort of sets, pauses, and now he's out, and he crosses underneath the fullback in a crossing pattern. Quarterback scrambling. Now he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Ball thrown right where he has to throw it on Witherspoon, a linebacker. He gets a good block by Stabline, the wide receiver. Moves the chains. Dante Lee 
replaces Smith. He'll be the tailback behind Harrison. Ellis is the tight end. All in. Back at wide receiver. Dante Lee cuts back. And the first tailback gets inside the 10-yard line before Sammy Walker, number 25, brings him down. You have to give credit to the offensive center, I think, in that kind of... When you cut back, when you start one direction and cut back, your center has to be doing a good job. Dan Beatty, 76 inside, as well as Peterson, 75. See, there's the hole right in there. Nice hole up inside. Did a good job. Should get a block from a receiver down there, but didn't get it. Dick, talk to me about manpower starting to wear a team down in the second half. Yeah, the other thing they're doing is they're coming straight off after them with their zone blocking, which the coaches even say that's the best thing they do. He battles inside the five-yard line with Matt Wingo hanging on there. Here's where the calls get tough. Second and five on the five. The decisions to what you do offensively get much tougher. As time runs out on the third quarter. And we're going to return with more between Texas Tech and Ohio State after this message and a word from our ABC stations. discover why Chevy Lumina is engineered to respond. Every day, more people are winning with There's a new attitude at Northwest Airlines, a new dedication to service. You can see it in our on-time performance, the best of the top seven U.S. airlines. That's our commitment, to make sure you're on time for your commitments. Chicken. You finally found a speed you can handle. <laughs> New spicy, zesty hot wings. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. Tomorrow, feed me now. Rick Moranis and Steve Martin star in a comedy not of this earth. The network premiere of Little Shop of Horrors tomorrow. News 8 at 5.30, Sundays on Channel 8. I've heard of guarantees on cars and washing machines before. But a guarantee on a sandwich? Jack in the Box has guaranteed the new sirloin cheesesteak. If I don't like it, they'll give me my money back. Juicy sliced sirloin grilled onions melting cheese. So to see if I really like it, I've tried, oh, about nine of these. The sirloin cheesesteak at Jack in the Box. Like it or your money back. Just to be sure, I think I better come back tomorrow. After a game, Rangers pitcher Charlie Huff doesn't just hang up his glove. He likes to pitch in to the community. So Charlie and wife Sharon planned a special day for these Wednesday's children. It just gives us the opportunity to invite some children who probably wouldn't get the opportunity to meet an athlete, you know, and go to a ball game. And we've been doing it for three years and really, really enjoyed it. Sometimes it's what you do off the playing field that makes a true sports hero. in Columbus, Ohio. Dick Vermeil and Mark Jones. I'm Brent Musburger. Ohio State and Texas Tech are tied at 10, and the Buckeyes are threatening. They have a second down just inside the five-yard line. Fry incomplete. That was Raymond Harris who slipped out of the backfield. And Real good. Ferguson attacks Fry. Oh, he's a corner blitz coming off the left side of your screen right here. Corner blitz and a good call. They're going to make a fake. See, quarterback can't see it coming. Here come, here he is, Ferguson, right in his face, forces a quick throw. Good job. Good job. And Here's the reaction the of the two coaches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I can remember those feelings. It makes me laugh. I shouldn't laugh, but I mean, I can remember those feelings. Third down. Fry 
incomplete. And they're faced with a fourth and goal tied at 10. And uh, Coach Vermeil, what about goal. this spot? Field goal. Would it go? No question. Now that is twice you know, the offensive clock here. <laughs> Coach Cooper is not enjoying this one at all. That's, folks, why coaches become broadcasters. Oh, man. Tim Williams made a 32-yard field goal at 8.30 in the third quarter. This would put Ohio State ahead. It is no good. He has missed a 21-yarder twice today. The Buckeyes fail inside the five. And now it's Texas Tech's turn. We're coming right back. Where can you go on Goodyear Wrangler radios? So where can you go on Goodyear Wrangler radios? Just about anywhere you want. Put on a set of Goodyear Wrangler radios, and you'll know why we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. In baseball, if you traded today, you're playing somewhere else tomorrow. I know. I played for the Twins, the Rangers, the Angels, and then some. And when you've got to move fast, you can't worry about selling your house. I let the Century 21 people worry about that. I trust them. And nobody works harder to get the job done. Hey, I love Century 21. Hey, Bert. Uh-oh. You got a second? I just wish I wasn't such a good customer. Century 21. Chevrolet introduces the bigger-than-ever four-door Chevy S10 Blazer. Now America's best-loved sport utility vehicle gives you four doors and standard four-wheel anti-lock brakes. The bigger-than-ever, better-than-ever 1991 four-door S10 Blazer. Open one up and see why nobody's winning like Heartbeat of America. The Super Bowl champion 49ers battle their division rivals, the New Orleans Saints. It's the season premiere of ABC's Monday Night Football. Well, there's a Buckeye alum who's not too happy right now, Jack Nicholas. That's his wife, Barbara, seated alongside of him. This man designed a great golf course here at Muirfield, and Chris Smith of the Buckeye golf team shot a 65 the other day out there. Right now, the Red Raiders are trying to shoot a birdie here. Greg Smith comes in to make the stop. We're tied at 10. We've got 14 35 to go, and we can take a look, Dick, at the third quarter stats. Well, Ohio State twice in this ball game gotten the ball down inside the five-yard line and come out with zero points. You see Ohio State 274 yards of total offense to 165. Not productive inside the five-yard line. Our guys have been to the two and the four and have no points to show for it. Now it is second and nine. Great defense that time by Smith again. Craig Smith. He's a sophomore out of Canton, 6'2", 255. He's played himself a whale of a game. He really has. He's a smart football player. He walked on no scholarship, as we mentioned earlier, earned a scholarship. And he was all-American freestyle wrestler, so he has that low center of gravity, good balance, and he can come off those blocks. Do you have a feeling that maybe uh, Texas Tech has been worn down just a little bit here? Well, they had to get a huge lift when the Buckeyes missed that yeah, field goal. Yeah. I mean, bless them, they've just played their hearts out here this afternoon. Got a hole. This is Lynn, oh. and he is hit. He was about to break free, and Alonzo Spellman got a paw on him. And, folks, I do mean paw. <laughs> I thought he had that one. Earlier in the ball game, they ran that draw up underneath him, and he didn't break the, react quick enough to make the play. So he has learned something. Top left-hand side of your screen. They run the draw, hand it back deep. He's breaking off there to the left corner of your screen, and he works back up inside and gets him by the feet. The Lagerman is back in the game. Key moment Lousy in this punt. ball game. And it's going to give the Buckeyes field position galore. Graham's free. 20-15. He'll score. Touchdown. Ohio State.
Graham, the senior out of Dayton, returns a 30-yard punt, 50 yards, and that'll just about do it, Coach. Well, he had a 66-yarder for a touchdown last year. He has that talent, but the fault lies not so much in the coverage. It lies in the punt. It was a low-line drive, and boy, they're almost impossible to cover. Extra point is good. Ohio State leads for the first time this season. If you needed to turn a lot of information into a finished document... Their coverage overran the ball. They expected the ball to be 30 yards further downfield. And this man is a gifted, gifted athlete. In fact, today he's only had the ball in his hand one time as a receiver. Uh, he has that ability. They've got to get the ball in his hand. Poor punt. from the deep men. No, it bounced into his hands, and Allen fielded it there. Oh. Can't get free as Lance Price buries him right there. You know, the Buckeyes are without Carlos Snow. Let's go downstairs to Mark. Thanks a lot, Brent. Carlos, this has got to be one game in particular that is really tough to watch from the sidelines. Uh, actually, it feels pretty good. This is my first game I had ever came to watch without playing, so I'm getting used to it, and um, I enjoy the fans, and um, these Buckeyes are really, really doing the job. Must, uh, what, what's your uh, status in terms of rehab? Your knee, you went in for a knee operation, and they found a benign tumor in your hip. Well, it's um, coming along slowly. You know, it's, it's a um, thing that I have to be patient on. And, um, I'll be back. My knee right now is giving me no problems. I just got to build my leg back up. And um, hopefully I'll be back next year strong. Kind of, kind of proud of Robert Smith right now? Yeah, Robert Smith is doing real good. He's going to make a position tougher to get back when I come. Thanks for joining us, Carlos. Okay. Brent, back to you. Mark, thank you. And on first down, that Buckeye defense led by Steve Tovar. Check the scoring by quarters. We didn't have a touchdown in this game until the second half. And now there have been three. The Buckeyes just scoring on a 50-yard punt return by Jeff Graham to take a 17-10 lead. We have 12-15 to play here in the fourth. We have to turn the lights on here pretty quick. <laughs> the play fake throws complete to the 42 yard line with great discipline the running backs have installed the running back coaches installed in, in the running back you see that fake he kept faking